Hey guys, it's Sadie from Sadie and Jarvis and I'm back with the update video. So I know you guys have been dying to hear an update about everything that's going on and about my delivery and about all that stuff. So I'm here to give you that. Um, the reason it's taking so long is because the babies are still in the NICU. So in order for me to do an update, I have to do it here at the hospital because this is where I am majority of the time. So this is the easiest. Sorry if you hear background noise and different things like that. I am at the hospital, so there's nothing I can do about that. So if you see me move or you see my background's a little different, it's because I had to move somewhere else, okay? Okay, so let's first talk about um, my delivery. So as in the last video, all the videos that you guys have seen since I've been pregnant have been made by Jarvis. Um, I filmed very, very little. So thank you, hubby, for handling the YouTube channel while I was pregnant because there was no way I was way too sick. I couldn't do it. It just was not possible. So thank you. Thank you guys for your patience and understanding and all that stuff. And hopefully we can get back to a regular schedule soon. So... The day that I went to the hospital, I had woken up to go to a doctor's appointment. I had an iron infusion because I have low iron. Ever since I had weight loss surgery, I've had issues with my iron being low and even before that really. Um, so during pregnancy, I was so sick, so I wasn't able to take iron pills. So they were giving me iron infusions like through um, my veins and stuff like that or whatever. So I woke up one morning and I was having like a lot of pressure and some contractions that I thought were probably Braxton Hicks but um, it was more the pressure. Um, so after my iron infusion, I was like, let me go over, cause the hospital's literally right across the street from there. So I was like, let me go over here and just get checked out to make sure everything's okay. Cause I'm feeling a lot of pressure or whatever. I just knew I was gonna be able to go home. Well, I got there to the hospital and I checked in and everything. And the hospital that I went to is the one that I used to work at. I used to work there in labor and delivery. So I knew all the nurses and all the staff and everything like that. So. Um, I said my hey's how are you doing whatever whatever and you know caught up with people and then once they checked me out um, they checked my cervix and I was four centimeters dilated four and I was having active contraction so I was in active labor and had no idea so I, at the time I was 31 weeks um, and four days pregnant um, so not quite 32 weeks so once they um, checked me or whatever assessed me they were like do you want to deliver here or do you want to deliver down at Texas Children's which is a children's hospital that specializes in women's health care and um, they have a higher level NICU better resources and different things like that versus the small town hospital because we live in a pretty small suburban area um, so they flew me from our hometown to um, like you know to Houston in the medical center so that way the babies could um, give me better care. The reason that they put me on a helicopter is because I was already four centimeters dilated. If I would have gotten to a five, I would have had to stay there at that hospital. And when the babies were born, they would have been transferred down here anyway. And I would have been stuck there at that hospital for at least three days before I could even see them. So we didn't want that. So that's why. And then the other thing is they didn't have any ambulances available. Like it was the middle of the day. Um, the only, they didn't have any amb ambulances available to drive me from Baytown Hospital all the way to Houston. Um, so they, and then they didn't want to risk me delivering in an ambulance because on the drive there, especially because the girls were so early, they just didn't want to risk it. Um, because if I would have delivered in an ambulance with no incubators, no, there just wouldn't have been enough resources in the ambulance for premature babies. So that's when they decided to fly me. So they put me on a helicopter. It took some time. Like I had to wait for the um, transportation crew to get, um, get from down here to, well, down at the medical center to get to the small hospital um so that way they could take me so what you saw in the other video with me in the ambulance was them taking me to the helipad so the hospital in our town is under construction right now 
So they had to take down the helipad to like build a new building where they're gonna put it on top of that. So they took me to like the airport, which is like five minutes away. So that's why you saw me in the ambulance. I know a lot of people had questions about that. So they took me to the in the ambulance to the helipad and then from the helipad i got in the helicopter and flew down to the medical center so that's why you saw me in the ambulance and then i was on the helicopter there was like a whole like i know that was confusing and i was in the middle of you know it was loud and people and stuff like that so i didn't get a chance to explain anything in the video um so that's that so once i got down to the hospital they um, put me on magnesium, which is supposed to stop labor, like stop contractions and stuff like that, um, and stop you from progressing. So they put me on that and they keep you on that for about 48 hours. Now I was on that for 48 hours, but then as soon as they stopped it, my contractions started back up. So for two days, I stayed in the hospital, just sitting there waiting to find out what was gonna happen. Um, so I sat there, they wouldn't let me eat or anything like that. So they had me on a clear liquid diet or whatever. So I could only have ice chips and uh, jello and um, like apple juice, stuff like that. Just in case they had to um, hurry up and do my C-section. Cause remember I told you in another video that I was gonna have a C-section because one of the babies was breached. And also I just didn't want to do a vaginal delivery. So once they, um my contraction started up or whatever um two days later then i dilated again so then i went from a four to a five and then like an hour later i was a six so i was like um remember i'm supposed to be having a c-section like can we just go ahead and do the c-section because i don't want to have to i'm already having contractions and experiencing labor pains like you're supposed to be doing my c-section so chop chop let's get to it so then they did my c-section so the girls were born on april 17th um, at 2 p.m. Um, one of them was at 2.04, the other one was at 2.07. So that's what happened with my labor situation. Ezra hasn't been able to meet them yet because they're not allowing any visitors except for mom and dad or mom and one other person or parents um, and then a grandparent. So me, my mom and Jarvis are the only ones that have been able to come up here. They're not letting any kids in here, even though it's a children's hospital, um, unless the kid is sick, they can't come in here. So. so I don't think he really understands what's happening, but once they come home, I think he's gonna be very happy. Um, but the girls have been doing great. Ezra's doing great. He's getting so big. I can't believe that he's like a big boy now. <laughs> my little heart is breaking but the girls are chunking up everybody's doing very well i'm doing well and we're just so excited that they get to come home next week so you guys will get to see a video of um ezra meeting them for the first time and us taking them home i'll also do like a day in the life video of a nikki mom um because it's not easy and it can be or a nikki parent um because Jarvis is here as much as i am most of the time he has to work still um we didn't want him to take his paternity leave until the girls came home so his last day of work is this week so that way he can come home and be with the girls for six weeks on his paternity leave so that'll be really nice so i'm very 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 excited i'm not gonna leave you hanging i know you guys are dying to see the baby so i'm gonna go to their room right now so that way you guys can see them and see how cute and adorable and perfect they are um because i want you guys to meet them you guys are part of our family so i want you guys to meet them too okay so come on let's go so this is journey as you can see she's a little busy she's eating it's eating time so i usually come and feed her first and then i feed destiny because she usually wakes up first she's the feisty one she's the diva i'm sure you've seen that in the pictures journey this is your youtube family So right now they get um, breast milk uh, six times a day and then they get formula twice a day um, just to help them um, get more calories because breast milk only has 20 calories and they need um, like 24 so they supplement with breast milk as well. I mean with formula. I wish they could be on strictly breast milk all the way but whatever helps them gain weight and get healthier and do all the stuff they need to do I'm good with. So we feed them on their sides um, so that way it helps them pace 
So, because when you hold them straight up or laying them back, it fills the nipple with too much milk and they can choke or um, take in too much at one time and we don't want that. And this is Destiny. Destiny is the youngest, but she is bigger than Journey. Journey was smaller than her. But they're only two ounces apart. Like now, uh, today, Journey was four pounds, two ounces. Today, Destiny was four pounds, four ounces. So literally, there's only two ounces of difference between the two. So they're very similar in size. The best way for us to tell them apart, well now we know their faces look different, but for you guys that don't see them every day, Journey has dark hair, brown, and Destiny has blonde hair. Also, um, Journey has a darker complexion and Destiny's complexion is lighter. All things that could change probably will, but for now, that's your little tidbit. Destiny, say hi. You're wide awake. Oh, what's wrong? It's okay. Can you say hi? You're wide awake. Can you say hi, YouTube? Say hi, YouTube. Can you say hi? What? What are you looking at? Journey, are you sleeping? You're sleeping so good. Hi, pretty girl. These cute little name signs that I got for them off Etsy. I got one of these for Ezra when he was in the NICU. So then I went back to the same seller and I got one for them. So cute. Also, I just wanna say that with hyperemesis, I was miserable my entire pregnancy and Jarvis was incredible. Jarvis handled everything that needed to be handled. I couldn't work because I was so sick. So I was on short-term disability my entire pregnancy. Um, it was just a very terrible experience. But once I had the twins, like I immediately, immediately had relief, like instantly. It was crazy. Um, so I think if, I, if we do decide that we wanna get pregnant again in a few years, I think that I'll have a better understanding and expectation of what could happen instead of thinking I was just gonna have this awesome perfect pregnancy like some people have and that's why I wanted to document a lot of what I was going through and I did on um, like uh, Instagram because I couldn't film but I could post like a picture or something like that every now and then um, just because people need to know that this could happen to you like you could have an absolute horrible pregnancy you could need home health care you could need a pick line you could need all these things which I did um, but I instantly had relief, so it was so worth it. People kept telling me that, and I was starting to worry that it wouldn't be, but it was the most worth the thing, and I would definitely do it again, for sure. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this update video. I'm Sadie. This is Journey, and this is Destiny, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Say bye, girls. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. You say bye-bye. <laughs> bye, guys.